But the thing is, it is indicative of where the Democrats' minds are and what they think of religion, which is they don't take it seriously. They don't actually know anything about it. They want to claim it when it's convenient for them and then cast it away the second that it is even mildly inconvenient for them or conflicts with their agenda. Because to them, the political ideology actually is the religion and Christianity is just a means to sometimes try to reinforce it when they think that they can. Hey there, fellow tacticians. Don't forget to like and subscribe and ring that little notification bell because the more likes and subscriptions I get, the more people see my conservative content, which will make America a better place and angers the dark cyber overlords at YouTube. Now you messed it up. <laughs> You're stupid. <laughs> And for today's Daily Dose of Stupid, look, if you watch the show, if you know me, you have a pretty good idea of what the Daily Dose of Stupid is today. Watch this clip as they, uh, part of the opening prayer to the 117th Congress. We ask it in the name of the monotheistic God, Brahma, and God known by many names, by many different faiths, a man and a woman. Uh, I love it when Democrats pretend to be Christians. It's hilarious. Uh, <laughs> so, a couple things on this before we get to the a men and a women thing. Uh, does this not sound like something that Gregory Post would do? For those of you who don't know, Gregory Post is the character who does the Social Justice Warrior Bible. In fact, I, um, you know, I should have played a clip of him real quick. You know, I, I, I may do that real quick just to give you a little snippet of it. I uh, know I don't, I don't have one of those ready, but you know, the the Gregory Post thing. He's just a, a basically a caricature of the super woke leftist preachers who are really far more concerned with their politics than preaching anything that the Bible says. And I think that that's what's going on with this representative, um, oh, what's his name, Emmanuel, I'm blanking on it. But anyway, uh, C Cullings, I think, is the last name. But anyway, um, he's a, a Democrat representative, and he was asked to lead the prayer for this. And it, really, the way that he ends that prayer, it does sound like a comedy sketch, like he's not even <laughs> a real person. And that's what makes it so hard, and, and one of the reasons that I respect the Babylon Bee and other satire sites at this point, like, the, the left has gotten so ridiculous, they're basically beyond satire. You can't even do satire, because satire is supposed to be a ridiculous exaggeration of something. Basically, all they do now is ridiculous <laughs> exaggeration. And so now the satire sites, they can't even do satire anymore, because the, the Democrats are, are satire of, of themselves at this point. <laughs> Like, Gregory Post couldn't even have come up with something that dumb. But what I want to get to even before we get to the A-men and A-women thing, the first part of that where he says that he's praying to the monotheistic God and also the polytheistic God, which he names afterward, which is a Buddhist deity, and then goes on and says the God that is known by many names and many different faiths. Does that sound familiar to any of you Bible students? Because it sounds an awful lot to me like the Sermon on Mars Hill, where Paul is talking to the pagans of old, and again, I'm, I'm going back to this because it's the truth, leftism has become basically old paganism. It is an alternate religion to Christianity. That's what went on here. He was praying to, as the Greeks at, at Athens on Mars Hill would have called it, the unknown god. For those of you that are unfamiliar with this biblical principle, what the Greeks were doing is they were worshipping a whole bunch of gods because they believed that there were all these different gods, Zeus and Athena and Ares and uh, Hephaestus and so on and so forth. And so they prayed to all these different gods and then because there were so many gods, the Greeks figured, well, there might be some gods that we might offend because we just don't know about them. So we're going to make this altar over here to the unknown god so that they have an altar just like all of, of the other gods that we do know about. And Paul actually uses that cleverly as an end to explain to them about the one true God, that there is one God and that there are no others. And it's a very clever sermon, but I don't have time to go into a chaplain's report on it right now. Suffice it to say that the principle here 
is that the Democrats are engaging in exactly the same thing that the pagans did, which is basically, they didn't really care about religion all that much. Basically, whatever you wanted to believe is fine, and uh, all the gods were real gods, and they all had power that, you know, they wouldn't have said that the Hebrew god was not really a god. They'd just say, yeah, let's add him to the Parthenon of gods that we have here. They're just, everybody's god is fine, and however you want to worship him is fine, and you know, let's uh, sacrifice a goat and um, dance around naked and have sex with a, an underage girl, and that'll be, you know, that worship is just as good as the worship that we're engaged in here. It's all the same. This pluralism kind of idea. The reason that's a problem, especially for a Christian, is in a polytheistic system, that's okay. I'm not saying that it's morally okay overall. I'm saying that if you are a polytheist, that is consistent with your theology. There is no one that can call themselves a follower of the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and also all of these other religions. They are exclusatory, and always have been. If you were a Jew, you could either be Jewish, or you could be a person that worships the God of the Jews, but you couldn't be somebody that worshipped all these paganistic idols and also be somebody that was right in the sight of God. That's in the Ten Commandments. He, he forbids that outright. And by the way, the same thing is true with Christianity. Christianity makes two claims. It, it makes a lot of claims, but these are the two I'm going to focus on. The first claim is that there is one God, and this is him. And the second claim is, and this is how you worship him, and you're not going to worship him in other ways. Jesus Christ, as, as C.S. Lewis points out, he slammed the door on that. He gave you no other options. It is either worship him and obey him and him alone or nothing. That's it. He gave you no options. And so this ridiculous pluralism where they're trying to just appease everybody and the, the God that's known by many different names and many different faiths and everybody worships him and they're all okay. I'm sorry, there's no truth to that. None, none whatsoever. Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Any man that comes to the Father comes by me. And anybody that tries to come a different way is a robber and a thief, and he will not be tolerated within the fold of God. That person is going to be cast out. There is one path. You can take that one, or you can be cast out. Those are your only options in Christianity. And so it's hilarious to me that when the left tries to do anything related to Christianity or to show the world that, you know, we are Christians, when they actually lead a prayer to introduce the new Congress, they still can't help themselves. They, they want to be, you know, very careful, careful that they don't offend anybody, so they engage in pluralism, which is specifically forbidden in Christianity. And so you cannot be a pluralist and a Christian. You can be a pluralist and be a pagan, but you cannot be a pluralist and be a Christian. Those two things are mutually exclusive of one another. But the funniest thing about this, which is of course gaining the most attention, is the amen and a women term. So amen is a Latin term meaning basically it is so or let it be so. And it is derived from ahmen, which is a Hebrew term basically meaning the same thing. It is not a gendered term. Just because the letters M, E, and N take place in, con uh, in concert with one another in the word amen does not mean it is a gender-charged term. It's not a masculine term. It just means it is so. And so, first of all, it's grammatically incorrect because if he's saying amen, wouldn't it be a woman instead of a woman? Like, there's only one woman, but there's lots of men. That seems uh, not woke enough to me, <laughs> so... And also, uh, if, I thought the leftists didn't believe in men and women. I thought that gender was just an arbitrary construct, and there are really infinite numbers of genders. So why, why are you enforcing the patriarchal idea, Representative Emanuel, by the way, sharing a name with Jesus Christ, who also said that you can't have more than one God and I'm the only way to get to God, um, why is it that you're engaging in, in that? Like, if you really believe that transgenderism is okay and that gender is just a social construct, then why are you enforcing the old-timey patriarchal idea of a binary gender construct? You racist, sexist bigot. See, that's the problem with wokeism. They engage in nonsense, and because of that, they can never do anything that is woke enough, even when they're doing their very best 
to be uber woke, but it's, it's very clear based on this. This guy knows no scripture whatsoever. He knows nothing about the scripture. He doesn't even know what the word amen means. At best, he has maybe a third grade understanding of Christian theology, and frankly, I doubt that based on the way that he handles this. I think that though the Babylon Bee did the best job of this, and the guys at Babylon Bee really are doing the Lord's work, uh, this was the headline that they put up in response to this. Biden promises a nationwide mask mandate and one mandate. <laughs> like, is, is this the standard that we're going to now? Even people on the left aren't defending this guy. Like, even people on the left, I think, they're not, like, piling on to him either. But even they aren't really defending him. I think they even realize that this is just dumb, and it really is. I mean, like, would it be sexist for me to say, mind your manners as opposed to mind your woe manners? Is politeness now a, a male thing exclusively because the word man happens to be in that word? The same thing with what Babylon B was doing with uh, mandate and, and woe mandate. Uh, th some of the memes on this have just been fantastic. And by the way, that, that one that I shared with uh, the Babylon B with Joe Biden, that was uh, a, my buddy Keith sent that to me. So hat tip to you. Thanks, Keith, for doing that. But ultimately, yes, this is funny and it's goofy and I have a good time with it too. I got a, I got a real good chuckle out of it. But the thing is, it is indicative of where the Democrats' minds are and what they think of religion, which is they don't take it seriously. They don't actually know anything about it. They want to claim it when it's convenient for them and then cast it away the second that it is even mildly inconvenient for them or conflicts with their agenda. Because to them, the political ideology actually is the religion and Christianity is just a means to sometimes try to reinforce it when they think that they can. I mean, we've seen that from Joe Biden. We've seen that from Nancy Pelosi. Devout Christian Joe Biden, who's never heard of the book of Psalms. And Nancy Pelosi, who says that her faith encourages everything that she does. And it's, it's how she makes her decisions. And that's actually the reason that she's in favor of abortion, despite being a Catholic, which outright condemns abortion. But yeah, sure. Every time that they believe that their faith is going to be convenient or something that is going to garner political support for them. They trot it out. The second that it is inconvenient for them, they slam it back in the closet and do not open it up again until they have to bring it back out for a second time. But here's the thing. I think the left genuinely likes the moral certainty and the moral superiority that comes with religion, and they like the feelings associated with the religion because they're very feelings-based anyway. But ultimately, they don't like the implication of it. They're fine with the feelings associated with God, and they're fine uh, with there being some kind of moral superiority, and they like the passages that they think kind of support their agenda. What they don't like is actually having to apply it to their lives or make any kind of personal sacrifices for it. And by the way, this is true of the Democrat Party, but this is true for a lot of people personally as well. It's, it's a human flaw. It's not something that is relegated to the realm of politics, but ultimately... This is why they prefer a malleable God. They prefer an unknown God that has no specifics, that has no standards, that they can just kind of pull those standards out and, and make the standards up as they go because their ideology is constantly shifting, and that's their real God. And so they prefer a God that is also constantly shifting. Basically, what the Democrats do is they remake God in their image even when their image changes. And that way... They never have to worry about being right or wrong because what they believe and what they feel is always right because ultimately that's the God that they want, a God that they can constantly change and shift and mold into the God that they need at the moment to support their political beliefs. That's the God that they worship, the unknown God that has no standards. The God that essentially informs them that everything that they believe is right and everything their opponents believe is wrong. That's the God that they want, and it's the God that they worship. But just like the idols of old, it's not going to be a God that can save their souls or actually inform them to do something that will improve their life. Studies show that YouTube videos featuring attractive women get far more likes and subscriptions than ones that don't, this is especially true if she's exotic looking. 
Luckily, in the modern era, there's an easy way to work around this. You see, I identify as a very attractive Hispanic woman, so now you have to like this video and subscribe to my channel, otherwise you're just an evil, heartless Nazi that hates brave, liberated, beautiful Latina women like me. Checkmate, woke brigade.